I have struggled with a blocked shaped body my entire life. And in recent years, it has only gotten worse. Desperate for results, I have decided to wear a waist trainer for an entire week straight. In doing so, would I finally achieve that most desired V-taper aesthetic physique? Or would this challenge lead me to some serious issues? Uh, Pay attention, uh, in this video, I am going to share with you my journey wearing a waist trainer 24 seven for an entire week. But you gotta focus. Now the waist trainer has been a pretty controversial item in the fitness world for a while now. But you've seen the ladies and maybe you've seen the guys. People promoting waist trainers on Instagram and other social media outlets, showing off their slim physiques, results that look like they only could have been achieved from using a waist trainer. Now on one hand you have people who swear by them, on the other hand you have people who say they absolutely do not work. Does it work, does it not work? YouTube scientists telling me this, telling me that, the only way to really know is I've gotta try it out for myself. And that's where this journey begins. Day one. Wearing a waist trainer 24 7. All right. Oh boy. Ugh. I want these to match my hips. You know what I mean? If I can get that into my hips, like we could do classic, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think it just like clips in here like this. Oh, is that too tight? <laughs> that looks so weird. Does it look tight? Yeah. Yeah, because it feels tight. It's definitely <laughs> uncomfortable. So first, putting on the waist trainer, my initial thoughts, you could feel the pressure. It was slightly uncomfortable, but nothing that couldn't be managed. All right, so I've been wearing this thing for about an hour. Um, so that means about only 167 hours left. Is that right? I mean, eh, you know, it's like, mm, it's not the, not the best, but it, maybe not the worst. So yeah, showed a shirt in here because this thing is like letting off this like weird smell that's not like, not like bacteria or anything, but like kind of like a chemical smell. <laughs> so uh, other than that, we're headed to the gym. I got this, I got this. Now just walking around the house for the first hour or so, nothing too crazy. Honestly, sensory adaptation took over. Sensory adaptation, what is that? Think of it like if you wear a bracelet or a watch for a long period of time. You feel it at first when it's on, but then over time you kind of forget about it. Same thing with the waist trainer at first. Now, when I went to train, this is where I started to notice a slight difference. Immediately upon my first workout with this thing, within about two hours of wearing it, it literally felt like it was taking my core out of my training. What I mean is that usually when I do something simple like a push-up, I feel like I'm really bracing my core, my entire body. But when I was wearing the waist trainer, it felt like I didn't have to brace my core. It almost made me not brace my core, which was kind of weird to notice at first. <sighs> oh, it's like hard to breathe. Warning, a small 2018 study of 10 women found that wearing a waist trainer decreased their maximum voluntary ventilation of about 10 liters a minute. That's on average over a 10% decrease in voluntary inhalation and exhalation, which means they're getting less oxygen over time, which is not good. And honestly, it isn't rocket science. Whether working out or just walking around, depending on the tightness, you can definitely feel the restriction on the rib cage and the intercostal muscles making it harder to breathe. So I did not like that. But hey, this is all about achieving that V taper aesthetic physique, all right? It ain't about breathing. So let's continue. After the first workout, afterwards, I noticed I was sweating a lot more in the core region where the waist trainer was. So literally this was kind of an issue if I was gonna plan to wear a waist trainer 24 seven. I'm someone who's kind of like a clean freak when it comes to shower hygiene basically, let's just put it that way. So what I decided to do was get another waist trainer that I could cycle with this one as the other one was going through the laundry and getting cleaned. Now when it came to eating on day one, this is where things started to get really not good. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Oh, I feel like I'm feel burp. Uh, I got this uh, first round. Usually I have like two rounds of this. Um, we'll see if I can get this down, all right? I'll let you guys know in a minute <laughs> or in a few minutes. All right. 
Just oh. eating anything with this waist trainer on was uncomfortable. Really couldn't eat much at all without the feeling of food being squeezed back up my esophagus. Still got another round of that to go. Um, you guys see this like float right here? It's like my stomach. I'm trying to like, oh, I got a breath. I'm trying to like uh, make room for that food, but this thing's like squeezing my waist down here and some of my stomach. Which is making it uncomfortable and it feels like some food's coming up but i still got a whole other plate to go if i want to get in enough calories to make matters worse after i was done eating i experienced mad gastric reflux i.e heartburn which is essentially where you have food and stomach acid coming back up your esophagus burning your esophagus indigestion now you might be thinking oh a little heartburn's worth it for a skinny waist well let me just tell you, chronic heartburn or GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease can cause a whole host of problems. But that's maybe a problem to discuss in another video. All I am saying is that even eating a small meal with this waist trainer on tightly caused me to experience this heartburn, and not only a little bit, but a lot. I was constantly belching, just constantly having that feeling of the food coming back up the esophagus. <sighs> excuse me, I'm sorry, excuse me. It was not good. Oh. Not good for digestion, not at all. And this leads me to sleeping. And we're only on day one, and this is where things got even worse. About to go to bed. Uh, yeah, still don't feel too comfortable right now, I gotta be honest. I feel like I'm probably gonna have trouble sleeping because I feel like food's gonna be coming up out of my esophagus, which isn't good. <sighs> Anyways, hopefully I sleep decent. I'll see you all in the morning. Warning, here's another horrible story. There was actually a report of a person who fell asleep with their waist trainer on tightly and died of asphyxiation or basically not being able to breathe. So hearing of this when I went into sleeping, I actually did loosen my waist trainer a little bit. It was still firm, still like a firm article of clothing, but I didn't have it super tight like I was wearing it the entire day. However, it was still extremely uncomfortable and extremely hard to sleep and it still felt like I had the worst heartburn ever. Didn't sleep too good last night. Day two, day three, the same discomforts and the same feeling. That's all I can eat. I can't, like, any more and it's like hurting my stomach. <laughs> now, scary thing I ran into on day three is it didn't seem like I was having, how do I say this, proper bowel movements. I'm sorry if this is a little too much information, but you probably are wondering, um, bathroom, yeah, you know what I mean, like, the, not, like, number two, um, not the best, I'm just gonna put it that way so far. Constipation and worry, the two things you don't want to couple together, let me tell you. But hey, we gotta achieve that V taper, right? So I was kind of getting worried about this on day three, in fact, it actually kind of made me feel like I wanted to maybe just stop this whole challenge together. Um, I don't think getting a bowel obstruction would be worth this video, a bottle of obstruction can lead to a whole host of problems. I mean, just look it up, not worth it. However, day four came and luckily things turned out in my favor. Not to be like too much information or anything like that, but uh, let's just say I had a decent bowel movement this morning. So I am, I'm happy about that because I was kind of getting worried a little bit um, because honestly, I'm just gonna be real. I don't think it's a good idea to wear a waist trainer 24 hours a day all the time. But still, that wasn't the end all of my problems. It's still the extreme feeling of food coming back up the esophagus, the difficulty breathing just on a day-to-day -day basis, walking around and working out, and the feeling of my core progressively getting weaker over time. I feel like it's taken away from my core strength. I don't know. Oh, it's hard to breathe. Uh. The usual movements just weren't feeling right. Um, I definitely feel like I... I'm really relaxing my lower back with everything, so maybe that's maybe that's okay for now. Just a little break from always using that lower back. But I could see how over time you would just get weaker. It makes sense. Just like any brace. By day five, I was actually noticing that I was getting pretty darn hungry. Freaking hungry. But every time I started to eat, it was just so uncomfortable and such an uncanny feeling. I just wanted to stop eating. 
And honestly, on days five, six, and seven, I think I was in a significant calorie deficit. Now you might be thinking, oh, wearing a waist trainer made you not want to eat, it made you less hungry. That, that's like a diet hack. Not quite, I was still really hungry and irritable. I just didn't want to eat because of the pain basically, or because of the discomfort of that food coming back up and the feeling of having a full stomach that already had something tight wrapped around it. I would much rather just cut my calories if I was intending to diet. But powering through, seeing if we get those results, seeing if that squeeze for seven days straight would somehow reshape my body. Would it happen? We're coming up to the final days here. Day six, day seven. So day six, I decided to hit up the gym, hit up upper body, hit up those weights to maximize this V taper, get them wide shoulders, get that tight waist, right? But yo, let me tell you, like seriously, on day six, like the weirdest feeling I had was the feeling of my core actually feeling significantly weaker than it was before I started this challenge. Before I started the challenge, I really felt like I had a pretty darn strong core. Like I felt pretty like bulletproof in the core. But by day six only, it felt as if I had more of a snowflake core. Even with the waist trainer on supporting me, I could just feel myself not using my core as much. It felt like the waist trainer was doing a lot of the work. And it felt like I was just getting noodly with inside the waist trainer. I don't know, maybe I'm being too hypersensitive, but I literally felt weaker, it didn't feel good. I'm gonna put it that way. Day seven came, a work day. Honestly, on work days, just working at my computer, it actually felt like maybe it was helping correct my posture, at least in the lower back, just holding me up nice, straight, and tight. It was easier to sit up straight. So I guess that's a benefit. But honestly, come to day seven, I could not wait to get this dang thing off. You would think you'd almost get used to it after seven days, but honestly, the irritation just increased, increased, increased. I felt like one of those dogs with one of those itch collars on, you know what I mean? One of those cones on its head, just like, Wow. Oh, that's a cat. Uh, I'm so done with this. I don't know if I look any different from the side and from the front. Sorry about that. Like when I first started, it was like right, like right here, and that was really tight. Now I'm going all the way, and uh, even with the top one too. All right, continuing on. With all the troubles I ran into during this challenge, finally, we would get to take it off. Day eight, the results. Today's the day. Today is the day. We finally get to take this stupid thing off. Nothing to it but to do it. Let's take this sucker off. See if we got those results that we were going after. All right, same position. Oh. Yeah, I know, I threw that other one on too. I'm a savage. Yeah, no. Oh! Oh! Ew. Oh man, the imprint. <laughs> Now immediately taking the waist trainer off after seven days of wearing the waist trainer, 34 inches above the belly button, 35.5 inches at the rib cage, and 32.5 inches at the hips. That's a one and a half inch decrease at the belly button, a one inch decrease at the rib cage, and a one inch decrease at the hips. Now check this out, crazy. After removing that waist trainer, it literally felt like my organs and stuff were kind of like moving back into place, which is kind of sickening to think about, but also interesting to think about when it comes to measurements. Because 30 minutes later, I took my measurements again and check this out. Yo, it literally feels like my organs are actually moving back into place. <laughs> Not good, I tell you. Above the belly button stayed the same at 34 inches. However, at the rib cage, my measurement was a tight 36 inches, which is one half of an inch larger than when I took it immediately after removing the waist trainer. At the hips, I also gained a half inch back in circumference after 30 minutes of not having the waist trainer on. So literally, the only thing I can think of is like literally all of that body that is being pushed out of that zone while wearing the waist trainer. After the waist trainer was removed, it took a second to sink back in, maybe? <laughs>
which goes to show you just how obstructive wearing a waist trainer can be. Now, with that being said, it did seem to steady here. I didn't gain any more inches back after not wearing the waist trainer. So overall, we actually did have a decrease in circumference at all of the three measured levels that I took. So the verdict, the waist trainer, it seemed to work when it came to the sheer numbers, the decrease in the waist size. Now, with that being said, was it the waist trainer? Or was it something else? Because I have a hypothesis I wanna share with you all before you go wasting your time and potentially cause yourself some serious side effects like I went through and potentially even worse side effects like others have gone through when it comes to wearing waist trainers. So like, just don't. Even doing it for a week, I don't think this was healthy at all because of the whole gastric problems that I was having, the indigestion, the potential bowel obstructions that one could accumulate by wearing this thing. It's just bad. I don't recommend wearing a waist trainer for tightening your waist. This is what I think actually happened and why my measurements were actually less. Because I didn't feel like eating as much because I was so uncomfortable towards the end of this experiment, I think that caused me to be in a severe calorie deficit, which caused me to lose weight. In fact, I took my weight before I started this experiment and I was around 190 pounds. At the end, I was below 187 pounds. That's a total of three pounds lost in this week process. Now I think it's made clear, but I'm gonna make it clear again, but it wasn't because I was wearing the waist trainer that I magically lost weight. It was because I was eating less calories that I lost weight. Now with that being said, before you're thinking like, oh, oh, you just wear a waist trainer and, and you don't feel like eating anymore, that's a great diet hack. No, okay, I was hungry, okay? I was hungry and extremely uncomfortable. It would have been so much easier just to diet naturally, just to cut my calories naturally. It would have been way more comfortable and I probably would have yielded similar results, if not better results. <laughs> I would have kept my core stronger because I would have been able to use it in my workouts better. Speaking of which, this video is brought to you by Bodyweight Beast 2.0. Bodyweight Beast 2.0, the 12 week calisthenics program that can get you into shape anywhere. All you need is a pull-up bar, but you can use a tree branch. 12 weeks, three phases. Get strong, get in the best shape ever with your own body weight. Because who cares about a pretty looking core when you can have a strong core? Body weight beast 2.0. It's not sponsored by Bodyweight Beast 2.0. It's, that's my own program, so I'm just just throwing that in there, you know, trying to make sales. <laughs> but a lot of you guys are giving me positive feedback on that program, and I appreciate that. Get the hard copy, too. The hard copy is cheaper than ever. Inflation, <laughs> not for Bodyweight Beast 2.0. Okay, I digress. First of all, I do not recommend wearing a waist trainer 24-7, especially if it is tight. My gosh, just looking at all of these horrific examples of wearing a waist trainer tightly, asphyxiation, bowel obstruction, sepsis, death, messing up the lungs, the guts, etc. If you don't die, you're gonna have a messed up looking body over a long period of time. However, the one thing I'm gonna say maybe I would actually recommend wearing a waist trainer for is goal specific. If your goal is to just achieve that aesthetic V tapered physique, now not for the reasons that a waist trainer would actually like squeeze you into looking like that, but for this reason, because the waist trainer seemed to take my core out of a lot of the exercises I was doing, wearing a waist trainer while working out might help you not use those muscles, which when just using the waist trainer only when working out over time, might yield those muscles to atrophy, become smaller, and maybe lead you to getting more of a V taper. Now with that being said, a pretty aesthetic core isn't essentially a strong core. And with the movements that I like to do and the exercises I like to achieve, I'm going to put an importance in strength and functionality over a pretty looking core. And it's just an excuse and you're just fat. Actually, yes, you are correct because by doing this experiment, thus forced me to eat less food, I actually noticed that I got a little bit leaner, lost a little bit of weight, and I feel like overall that gave me the best results was just the calorie deficit because honestly, if I just squeeze my sides, I do feel a decent amount of fat, and I think the healthiest thing to do isn't to deactivate my core to shrink the waist, but rather is to just continue my training but go in a slight calorie deficit like I should have been doing this summer because we're trying to get lean, right? Man, I... hopefully I made myself clear. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, enjoyed this challenge. I hope it was entertaining. Stay tuned, I have more videos coming out, more one week challenges. 
I hope you all have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe and turn those notifications on. Peace. You all have a good one. Yeah, you home slice. I will see you all in the next video.